Hey guys, Harlow Brief Dan here with another episode of the Unity Making RPG series. Today we're going to continue working on the fireball, or excuse me, the ability system where we create the fireball ability. In the last episode, we talked about and created the fireball class, which I'll go over in just a moment. And then we're going to jump in and look at look at what I've created for this video. Um, I'm going to I've coded a lot of the stuff for this video. This video is going to be two parts where we actually create the physical fireball object uh, in game. And I'm going to kind of go over how I set up the scene. I'll go over all the code and go over the co-routine that I created to handle all this. Um, and again, this is just to show you guys that it's going to be working in-game. So uh, this is like a prototype, if you will, of the ability system. So without further ado, let me go into the code here. So I'm in Visual Studio. I am in the Fireball Ability class that we created the first time. And here is that Fireball Ability class, right? Fireball Ability, it, it inherits from Ability. Um, it has a name, a description, a base effect, damage, a base effect uh, for AoE, and it's DOT. Uh, and then we've created the Fireball Ability Constructor where it inherits it uh, from its base class of ability where it takes object information, a name, and a description, which is Fireball, and then a fiery mass that explodes on impact. Um, we talked about this private const sprite icon, icon uh, equals resource.load, where basically you pass in the path of where this icon would be. Um, and then in the constructor, we, we talked about adding uh, ability behaviors, which would be range, area effect, and damage over time. And we set a few variables inside those constructors for that. Uh, so basically, this is the fireball ability class. Uh, I mentioned that la in the last video that you can create all your abilities in classes such as this. right? You don't have to use the editor that we'll, we are going to be creating because this works just as fine. And that's what uh, the physical... Hopefully that's what the physical game object view that we're going to be working on today in the next video will kind of prove. Um, so after, since we've gone over that, let's go ahead and let me show you in-game what I've created so far. So first off, here is the in-game scene. I'm in a brand new scene uh, where I added a cube. Uh, the cube is our game world right here. It's, the, uh, it's this platform. Just added that as a ground. Uh, I added a canvas. So all you need to do is go to Create, UI, and Canvas. The Canvas will create an event system for you. Uh, I also have the, de the default main camera and directional light. I've changed the camera's uh, position. Uh, basically, it's just set randomly, but we can change those to round numbers. So, so we'll set that to 7 and, let's say, negative 26. doesn't really matter. Uh, the rotation is set to 358, 349, and 5.8 in the y, Z, Y, and X respectively. So that's the transform. Those are the, uh, the rotation and position of our camera. I just set it up so that it, it looks like a good scene view of our game. I haven't set up the third person controller or first person controller to actually visually see everything. Uh, but we have the object instantiating which is what I wanted to get done today in this video. So we have that set up. Inside our canvas we have one game object. It is a button. So if I go to that button, you see this beautiful button here that I've created. And uh, here we're in 2D mode right now. Uh, this button is just a generic button. You go to uh, Canvas, right-click Canvas, go to UI, and then create a button. And under Button, usually you'll have a text. Actually, I'll show you. So if you create a new button, you unload, uh, its child is basically a text object. And I just went ahead and deleted it. I didn't need it. Uh, so once I once I did that, I dragged this sprite, this fireball sprite, which you can see under materials here, onto the sprite button or source image for the sprite, uh, which is on the image, uh, which is the image. Excuse me. Uh, and then once I did that, I created a new script, right? But what you need to do when you create your button is add an image to it. So go ahead and right click and then hit UI and image, and make sure you make the image a child of the button. And all I've done with that image is I resized it so it fits my button. So my button right now is 64 by 64. I added the image on top of the button or made it a child of the button. And I changed its width to 64 by 64 as well. Um, I have the ability spin source image, which is just a white box. It's a white PNG box. Uh, and again, I'll put these both down in the description below so you can download them and use them if you want. But here you can see this is just the simple texture or simple sprite or icon I made for a fireball ability nothing special uh, but the ability spin is a image that's a child of the button it's a white image 
Then I've changed the color to black, and I've set the alpha channel to 45, right? 40, the alpha channel is going to set its transparency, and so I've got, gone ahead and set it to 45. I've set the image type to filled, and then I changed the fill method to radial 360 and its top, fill origin to top. And you'll see this in just a moment, it working. But basically, this allows me to fill this image, right? So in a lot of RPGs, you have like a timer, your cooldown timer. So what's going to happen is when we use this ability, we're going to start the timer. And the timer is going to be visible by this fill image, okay? Uh, the clockwise is checked true, and the preserve aspect is checked true. So once you've gone ahead and set up that image here, I'll pause the video just a moment. You can check it out. Uh, make sure you got the right settings. Once you have that set up, our scene is ready, right? So we have a main camera, directional light, a canvas, a button with an image attached to it, an event system, and a cube for our floor. Uh, real, another thing I've actually changed, I've gone to the main camera and I've set our clear flags from a skybox to a solid color and I've changed the color to 71, 82, 99, and 5. Pretty simple, it's just this bluish gray color here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press play and we're going to enter the game. And there's a few things I want you to see. Uh, first, when I click this button, you're going to see that rotation image. It's going to uh, fill. And then you're going to see a ball, which is a sphere with a particle system attached to it, fly off the screen. So here you see the ball, the particle system. It's, fl it's flown off the screen. And if you missed it, I'll do it again. Our button goes inactive. So I can't click it and we rotate. So now we're launching every one and a half seconds, we're launching our fireball into the game world. Uh, and, it, and if you see over here, I'm not actually deleting them right now. We don't have that set up in this video. We're going to be covering that in the next video. But I, I, want to get up, I want to get the instantiation, the prefab, and all that stuff set up for this video. So pretty simple. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. I haven't added any sounds or anything to this yet, but we got the general prototype up and running. We're using our fireball class. Uh, and we have the button working as intended. So let's go ahead and talk about it and let's get the code up and let me let you guys basically play with the prototype. So under materials you're going to need to import or download the two text file, texture files or the sprite files that are being in the description below. Once you've done that in your materials folder go ahead and click right click on the materials folder create and we're going to be creating a new material. Uh, I'll just label this fireball uh, 2 and I'm just kind of showing you what I did. So Fireball 2 here, we've created a new material. In the inspector in the shader area, I'm going to use the standard shader and I just dragged my ability spin to the albedo map and I've changed the color to more of an orange color. So let me click the material I actually created. You can see here I have the albedo texture is the ability, sprite, uh, ability spin sprite. I've changed the texture to this orange which is 253, 135, 9 and 255 for its RGBA sliders or numbers. Um, I've changed the metallic to zero and the smoothness is set to zero. Very, very, very basic shader. It's nothing, you know, it's the standard shader. It's nothing special. Uh, but th this is the material that you'll need for to copy me exactly. I'll go ahead and delete this fireball too because we don't need it. Well, we have our fireball one, okay? Now the next thing you're, you're going to need to do to get this up and running is in the scene view. Let me uh, click on the cube here. In the scene, oh, I'm in 2D mode. In the scene view here, you're going to want to create a uh, sphere, right? And this sphere is going to be our ball, our fireball. And the way I did that is go to game object. We're going to create a 3D uh, sphere. And I'm going to reset its position in the game world. I'm going to drag it up a bit so we can see it. And we're going to double click it here in the hierarchy and we're going to look at it. So here's our sphere, right? Nothing special, just a plain old sphere. I'm going to drag the material that we created, right? I'm going to left click it and drag it to the default material area in the mesh renderer. And you'll see that our, our sphere now is orange. Just like we want, right? We have an orange colored fireball looking thing. Nothing special, but it's there. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to do is add a component to it. And it's going to be a physics component. It's going to be a rigid body. Uh, I've changed my mass to 0.5 and I've also changed the drag to 0.5. Um, these are just numbers for now. Uh, we'll be messing with these more a lot when we fine tune the system and the spells and stuff. Uh, but this is what I've set to for now. 0.5 for drag, 0.5 for mass. I've also froze the rotation in the X, Y, and Z by checking these boxes under constraints. So on your rigid body, under constraints, you'll see freeze position and rotation. Uh, I froze the rotation for the X, Y, and Z again. Now, after you've done that, you can label your sphere, change it to fireball or whatever you want. So we'll say, change it to fireball, like that. 
you can right click on fireball and we're going to add a particle system to it so right click and you'll see particle system and here is where I kind of experimented and played around with what I wanted my fire ball to look like the, or the particle renderer so I'm going to delete this from the scene I'm going to drag and drop my prefab into the world so you can see it so here is my fireball prefab right uh, and again, the way you make something a, a prefab, if you're confused, you click the fireball or whatever uh, game object, and you can just drag it down your project file, and it'll create a prefab for you. I'm going to go ahead and delete that because I already have one. Yep, delete. But here, if we look at our fireball in the game world, we have a sphere. This is the inspector for it. We have a transform, a sphere, a sphere collider, a mesh renderer with the fireball material that we created, a rigid body with the mass set to 0.5 and the drag set to 0.5, you can see my constraints. I have frozen the rotation on the X, Y, and Z axes. And you see this other uh, component called constant force. And the way you add that is you go to add component, physics, and then scroll down and find constant force. And it's going to allow you to manipulate some of the variables that are in the uh, prefab or the constant force. Which basically what this means is going to add a force of negative 10 and 5 to my prefab. Now the reason why it's negative 10 is if I go in the game world, the way I have the camera set up, uh, negative 10 is actually in the left, right? So if you think of a, uh, a four quadrant graph, you have your X and Y, your positive values are going to be in the left hand quadrant, uh, or right hand quadrant. Your left hand upper quadrant is going to be your negative X values and your positive Y values, right? So that's why I have a, a positive Y, because we're going to be kind of pushing up against gravity as this thing flies, but we're also going to be pushing in the negative X direction. Uh, when we instantiate it. Now, this constant force, this uh, this component is definitely going to change as we get into the game world because we're going to be applying the force at the start or maybe adding a coroutine that constantly adds force in the direction that we launched the um, projectile in. Uh, but for this simple prototype purposes, this works fine. So once you have that all set up, if you need to pause the video, go ahead and do that. But once you have all that set up, again, drag and drop the prefab into the hierarchy or the project folder. I'm going to delete this out of my game scene, and we're going to work on a script. Uh, I've already written the script, and um, so we're going to I'll go over it as clearly as possible. Um, but basically what you need to do is on your button, uh, go ahead and create a script. I've called it Ability Use. So in the project, go to Create, C Sharp Script. And let's open up that script. I've called it ability use again, and I've added some several variables in here in a coroutine. So let's first talk about the variables. First, I have a public game object uh, fireball prefab. This is the prefab of the game object that we just created, right? The sphere and the particle system. Uh, I have a private variable called fireball ability, which is the class that we created in the last video, and I've just uh, labeled it FBA. I've included the system.diagnostics library so that we can use a stopwatch which is labeled the ability cooldown timer. So if your ability has a, a cooldown on it, then you're going to need a timer to monitor that cooldown. I have a force multiplier which we are not actually using anymore so I can delete that. I also created a private instance or a cache of our button and our fill image. The fill image is the image that rotates uh, 360 degrees, right? It's that circu circular fill. So let's talk about the method that we're going to create. The first method you're going to create is a public void, and I called it onBility uh, use. And it takes a game object, and it, the game object is the button. So if I go into Unity, and this script again is attached to my button, um, so I could just get the reference by saying this game object uh, dot get component button. But what I'm doing is because this script really shouldn't be attached to this button. We want this script attached. We want a we the button really doesn't care later on what button is being you know what information is being passed to it right uh, but for instance just for, for prototyping I've created this real quick anyways attach the script to the um, button class and then what you can do is attach drag the button to the on click uh, parameter here right if you hit the plus button you can drag game object you're gonna drag the button game object to it and then you're gonna find the function on ability use once you find that, you're going to drag the button game object again to the button spot here for the argument and <clears throat> go back into Visual Studio. So basically what we've done is we're calling the on ability use when you click the button and we're passing in whatever button we, we clicked, the game object that we clicked on, which is the button. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be capturing the fill image. And the way we do that is by looking at the game object, we're going to get its transform. 
We're going to get the first child in its hierarchy, which there's only one, so you get the zero child. We're going to get its game object, and then we're going to get the game component, or the component image, which allows us access to that fill image that we've entitled image, and then we can mess with the fill amount, which will change how much uh, rotation is on that image. So back in Visual Studio, once we've captured that, I've kind of I use a Unity doc, debug dot log just to test some things out. We we don't need that, but I'll leave it just in case. Uh, the next thing we're doing is we're getting the game component button, uh, and we do that by BTN, which is the game object we pass in. Get component, get the button component, and we uh, set that equal to the cache version of button. Uh, I set the interactable to false, meaning that once you click on this once, the ability goes, and you're no longer allowed to spam that button until the fill uh, until its cooldown is off. We set the fill amount to one, and then I st go ahead and instantiate the start timer. I start it, I, and then I start it. Uh, I create the new instance of our fireball ability by saying FBA, which is our uh, private variable FBA. We set that equal to a new fireball ability. We create a game object called Go, and we instantiate the prefab by doing instantiate angle brackets game object so we're telling the compiler that what we're instantiating is a game object and then we pass in the fireball prefab we pass that in and then we start a coroutine okay so this coroutine I've called spin image and basically this is in, uh, mainly in charge of spinning our float image our uh, our fill image and all we're doing here is we have a while loop where we're checking to make sure that the timers running we're saying, hey, ability cooldown timer elapsed total seconds. So the total amount of time that this thing is running is less than our ability cooldown. So if our ability cooldown is five seconds, this timer will run for five seconds. Uh, while it's running, we're continually uh, updating our f uh, fill amount. And the way we're doing that is by doing the total seconds divided by the ability cooldown, and we cast that as a float. Um, we cast the ability total seconds as a float, and then we divide by the ability cooldown, and we set that equal to a fill amount. Once this set is set to true, right, this while loop exits, we're going to set our fill amount back to zero. We're going to make our button interactable again that, so that it allows the user to uh, play around with it, and then we're going to reset our timer. So we've messed with timers before, and we've played with several coroutines by now, so this shouldn't be too challenging for you guys to kind of understand. If you are having trouble, let me know. Write it down in the comments below. Uh, and if you have any issues with this onAbility method, go ahead and, and please write down any questions you have in the comments below, and I'll be sure to answer them in the next video. But basically, this is it. Once you've written this script and you've attached it to the button, go ahead and drag and drop the, the information you need. Remember, uh, by dragging the button here and then going to here and clicking Ability Use on Ability Use is the method and then we're dragging the button game object into this little box here the, with the ability script attached it doesn't have to be attached to the button it can be attached to any game object in the scene but here I've just drag and dropped our fireball prefab from my projects folder into the fireball spot in this empty spot and if everything's set up correctly you don't have any errors you go ahead and press play oh my goodness what is going on right now I added a rigid body to the queue. Let me go ahead and delete that. <laughs> Remove component. And let's go to our let me press play again. Everything should be good. I'm gonna hit my button. You see the timer and our fireball ability. We can now I can't spam it. But as soon as it comes up I can, right? Which is what we want. So hopefully uh you like what you see so far. Again, all these images will be in the comments or in the description below. Please like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.